Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Onin Tigisman and our lesson for today is Rational Exponents and Radicals. In your past lessons, you encounter exponents. Exponents provide you with a convenient way to represent and work with large and very small numbers. In this video, you will extend your understanding on exponents, specifically exponents in the form of rational numbers or fractions. You will also learn how to equivalently denote rational number exponents using rational expressions or radicals. On the rational exponents, let's have the expression a is equal to b raised to 1 over n. Now, if we will multiply or raise both sides of the equation, so if I have a is equal to b raised to 1 over n, and if I raise both sides of the equation to n, so I will result to the expression a raised to n is equal to b raised to 1, or simply as a raised to n is equal to b. Similarly, let n be a positive integer, then b raised to 1 over n is defined as the principal nth root of b. This means that, number 1, if b is a positive, then b raised to 1 over n is the unique positive number a, such that a raised to n is equal to b. If b is equal to 0, then b raised to 1 over n is equal to 0. Number 2, if b is negative and n is odd, then b raised to 1 over n is the unique real number a such that a raised to n is equal to b. And finally, if b is negative and n is even, then b raised to 1 over n is not defined. So let's consider the expression a raised to m over n, which is equal to in expanded form as a raised to 1 over n raised to n provided that a raised to 1 over n is defined. So let's consider this example. So I have here 8 raised to 4 over 3. This can be expanded as a raised to 4 over 3. But take note that 8 can be expressed as, okay, so 8 is the same as 2 to the third power. So I have here 2 to the third power raised to 4 over 3. Then I can factor out 3, so therefore I can have here 2 raised to 4. But 2 raised to 4 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 16. Let's have another example. So if I have here negative 23 raised to 2 over 3, take note that negative 27 is a negative, therefore I can express this one as negative 3 to the third power. So, this expression now is actually so negative 3 to the third power raised to 2 over 3. Take note that I can factor out also 3 and 3. So, it will result now to negative 3 squared. But negative 3 squared is equal to negative 3 times negative 3 or this is equal to positive 9. On the next example, we will utilize the zero exponent. So let's consider the expression b raised to negative m all over n can be expressed as 1 all over b raised to 1 over n raised to m, provided that b is not equal to zero. So let's consider this item, okay, 32 raised to negative 3 over 5. Okay, take note that I can express 32 as 2 to the fifth power. So therefore, I can rewrite this one as 2 to the fifth power raised to negative 3 over 5. Take note that I can factor out 5. So I will have now here 2 raised to negative 3. So this is the same as 2 raised to negative 3. But take note that I can make this exponent positive by putting 2 raised to negative 3 into the denominator. So I have here 1 all over 2 raised to 3 
but 2 raised to 3 is equal to 8. So therefore, the final answer is 1 over 8. Let's consider the next example. So I have here 16 over 25 raised to negative 3 over 2. I can express 16 as 4 raised to 2. Similarly, 25 can express as 5 raised to 2. Alright? Then I can factor out or simply distribute negative 3 over 2 in the exponents both in the numerator and denominator. So I can factor out 2 and 2 here as well as 2 and 2 here. So I have 4 raised to negative 3 over 3 all over 5 raised to negative 3. But take note that to make the exponent positive, I'll put negative or 4 raised to negative 3 in the denominator as well as 5 raised to negative 3 in the numerator. It will result now to 5 over 3 raised all, all over 4 over 3. But 5 raised to 3 is equal to 125 and 4 raised to 3 is equal to 64. Using the law of exponents, we can simplify also rational exponents such that b raised to 1 third times b raised to 5 over 3. Take note that in the law of exponents that we can apply or simply add the exponents. So I have b raised to 1 over 3 plus uh, 5 over 3. And I can simply add 1 and 5 so it will result to 6 over 3. So, and the base is the same as b. So but 6 over 3 can be simplified as 2. So therefore, the final answer is b squared. Similarly, if I have here x raised to 6 times y raised to 9 times z to the 15 raised to 1 third, I can distribute, okay, 1 third. So it means that I have here x raised to 6 over 3 times y raised to 9 over 3 times z raised to 15 over 3. Simplifying it further, I have here x squared, y cubed, z to the fifth power. Let us move on to the next example. Say for instance, I have h raised to 1 fourth times h raised to 2 over 3. Take note that I will use the law of exponents such that I'll simply add the exponents. So I have here 1 fourth plus 2 over 3. I'll get first the equivalent fraction. Since the LCD of 4 and 3 is 12, so the denominators or the least common denominator is equal to 12. So again, we will get the equivalent fraction such that 12 divided by 4 times 1, so we have 3. Next, 12 divided by 3 times 2 is equal to 8. So that is why we will have the expression h raised to 3 over 12 plus 8 over 12. Then I can add now the numerators in the exponents. So I have h raised to 11 over 12 as the final answer. Similarly, if I have 8 raised to 5 over 3 divided by 8 raised to 4 over 3, I'll use the law of exponents since okay, I have the same denominator, I can simply subtract the exponents. So I have here 5 over 3 minus 4 over 3, so it will result to, okay, so it will result to 8 raised to 1 over 3. But take note that 8 can be expressed as, okay, can be expressed as 2 over 3. Then I can factor out 3, so uh, I have only 2 over 1 or 2 raised to 1, or simply as 2. Let us consider fifth example. So I have the expression is uh, x raised to 2 over 3 all over x raised to 1 half raised to 2. Now, I can distribute 2 in both the numerator and denominator. So it will result that x raised to 2 over 3 raised to 2 all over x raised to 1 half raised to 2 so, I have now the expression x raised to 4 over 3 because I'll multiply 2 times 2. Then after that, I have also, okay, uh, x raised to 1 half times 2, so it will result to 2 over 2. Okay, since I have the same base, I'll apply now, okay, 
the quotient rule. It means that I'll simply subtract the exponents. Now, take note that I have the similar okay, terms or the similar fractions. I'll weight them as equivalent fractions such that the LCD is equal to 6. Wherein, I'll resolve to 8 over 6 minus 6 over 6 because if I'll get the equivalent fractions of 4 over 3 minus 2 over 2, so again, the LCD is equal to 6. So again, 6 divided by 3 times 2 is equal to 8. While 6 divided by 2 times 2 is equal to 6. So that is why what I come up with x raised to x uh, 8 all over 6 minus 6 over 6. So I have now, okay, x raised to 2 over 6 or in lowest term, this is the same as x raised to 1 over 3. From the idea a while ago, let's convert now exponential exponents into radicals. Let us consider example number 6. If I have 5 raised to 1 half, I can rewrite this one as the square root of 5. Take note that I can have the index 2, okay, and 5 as the radical and 1 as the exponent. But, in simplest term, I can simply rewrite this one as the square root of 5 because if the index is equal to 2, I don't need to rewrite this one as 2. It is understood that the index is equal to 2. No need to write this. Also, if the exponent is 1, we don't need to write 1 anymore. So, cross it out. So, therefore, 5 raised to 1 half is equal to the square root of 5. Moving on, if I have here... 4 f raised to 2 thirds, take note that the index is equal to 3 and the radicand is 4 f raised to the exponent 2. But take note that 4 f raised to 2, if we will distribute 2, it will result to 4 squared. So 4 squared f squared. Okay? But 4 squared is equal to 16 f squared then. Okay, we have the final answer as cube root of 16f squared. Next, if I have here cube root of 56, first, I'll factor out 56 such that I have cube root of 8 times 7. But 8 can be expressed as, okay, 2 to the third power. Then, I can separate this together as cube root of 2 cubed times cube root of 7. But take note that if I have 2 thirds, okay, if I'll write cube root of 2 thirds, uh, 2 cube, here, I can factor out 3. So therefore, now, I have 2 raised to 1 or simply as 2. So, I have here 2 and simply an x cube root of 7 because we cannot determine exactly the cube root of 7. So therefore, the final answer is, is 2 times the cube root of 7. Let's move on to problem number 9. So if I have the square root of negative 9, take note that our radicand is negative 9. However, our index is actually even because... Even though we don't have here index, it means that our index is equal to 2. So, if our index is even, it means that, okay, there is no real root. Similarly, on number 10, if I have 4th root of negative 16, our radicand is negative and our index is even. So, therefore, 
there is no real root. However, on item number 11, if I have cube root of negative 27, okay, 3 is actually an odd number, okay? So therefore, negative 27 can be expressed as negative 3 to the third power. If I will rewrite negative or cube root of negative 27 into exponential form, so negative 27 can be expressed as negative 3 to the third power raised to 1 over 3. I can factor out 3. So therefore, the cube root of negative 27 is the same as negative 3. Similarly, on number 12, if I have 7th root of negative 128, 7 is actually an odd number. Okay? Therefore, I can express negative 127 as negative 2 to the 7th power. And if I'll express this 7th root of negative 128 into exponential form, so this is similarly as negative 2 raised to 7 raised to 1 over 7. And I can factor out 7. So therefore, the answer is equal to negative 2. So that ends our lesson for today. Again, this is Teacher Ona de Guzman. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified on my new videos. So thank you once again.